Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. I've been praying for you, and I know that you've been praying for me as well. You know, because it's Mother's Day today, I thought I'd share some things that that I've been learning over the years that really took me a long time uh, to discover. But once I I realized God's plan for family and and how important our mothers are, uh, I really appreciate my mom a whole lot more now. So I hope that you'll enjoy this lesson. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about honoring people. It tells us that we are to honor those worthy of honor. And today we celebrate and honor our mothers. As a nation, we honor many different people for many different reasons. We set aside special days to celebrate and honor them. People like Christopher Columbus for his discovery of the Americas. People like Martin Luther King Jr. for his work in civil rights and Cesar Chavez for his work in labor rights. We have a special day that we celebrate Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday. We celebrate St. Valentine and St. Patrick's. And you know, there's often a lot of debate over whether a person actually rises to the level worthy of honor. But this is not the case with mothers. In God's eyes, mothers are not just worthy of honor, they are absolutely to be honored. So this morning I'd like to share with you three reasons why we are to honor our mothers. I'd like to begin with what it means to honor someone. There are two aspects of the word honor. The first is being respectful in word and action. It's the idea of having due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. The second aspect is having an inward attitude of esteem for their position. In other words, a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Both of these aspects apply to honoring our mothers. Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And in Matthew 15 verses 3 and 4, Jesus replied, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother. And Ephesians 6 verses 2 and 3 says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So what do we learn from these three passages of scripture about why we are to honor our mothers? Each of them reminds us that we are to honor our mothers because God commanded it. Honoring our mothers is one of the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai, written by the finger of God on two stone tablets. It was the fifth commandment in the Decalogue. The first four commandments had to do with our relationship with God, and the other six had to do with our relationship with others. Honoring our mothers would have been the first commandment written on the second tablet, possibly signifying how important it is. It was also the first commandment with promise that you might enjoy long life upon the earth. Our mothers play a significant role in preparing us for life so that we might be happy and successful, strong and healthy, well-mannered, that we might get along with others and live in peace while we journey through life. During his life on earth, Jesus reaffirmed the importance of honoring our mothers. He exemplified it throughout his life. Luke tells us in Luke 2, verses 41 through 52, that Jesus at the age of 12 was a loving, obedient child. In John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, we learn that even as an adult, Jesus was very respectful to his mother, granting her request at the wedding feast to make water into wine. And in John 19, 25 through 27, we see Jesus hanging on the cross, 
showing deep concern for his mother's well-being after his death, charging the disciple John to care for her. Jesus also stressed the importance of honoring our mothers in his ministry and teaching. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and teachers of the law for their disregard in honoring their mothers. They taught that it was more important to keep the religious traditions than it was to care for their mothers and fathers in their old age. In verses 3 through 6, Jesus said, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say that if a man says to his father or mother, Whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is a gift devoted to God. He is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Paul would later go on to write in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 4, But if, any, but if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. In verse 8 it says, If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The early church also taught it as doctrine. Paul encouraged the church in Ephesus to teach their children to honor their mothers and fathers. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, he wrote, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. In contrast, those with a depraved mind are characterized as disobedient to their parents. In Romans chapter 1, Verse 28, it says, Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They are disobedient to their parents. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, Paul wrote this. He said, Mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. We learn from all these writings that honoring our mothers is no small matter. In Proverbs 1 verses 8 and 9 it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Proverbs 6, 20 through 22 says, My son, Keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. Why else are we to honor our mothers? Let's consider the second reason now. The second reason is because mothers deserve it. Mothers have the most important job on earth. Someone has said that as the family goes, so goes society. Families are the foundation of society. If children are unruly, disrespectful, and disobedient at home, they will be that way at school. And when they grow up and become adults, they will show the same disrespect for authority and for others. It all starts at home and mothers are the foundation of families. They have the most influence in their children's lives. They're the ones who teach their children 
manners, respect, kindness, compassion, obedience, forgiveness, how to get along with one another, and so much more. Being a mother is an incredibly hard job. Consider all that our moms have done for us from the very day we were born. They fed us, burped us, changed our diapers, held and rocked us to sleep, read us books at night, washed our clothes, took care of us when we were sick, took us to school and to baseball practice, helped us with homework, and on and on the list goes. What other job on earth is so demanding and pays so little with so little appreciation? 24-7, our moms are on call, day after day, working constantly, and many moms work all day at their secular jobs and then come home and work again. Proverbs 31 verses 28 through 31 says, Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring praise to her name at the city gate. The last reason I want us to consider as to why we should honor our mothers is because we owe it to them. We owe it to them for their enduring love and devotion. Think about all that our moms put up with, all the crying and whining and complaining and disrespect and rebellion and disappointment. And yet they continue to believe in us. They never lose hope. They keep hoping and praying for us, patiently waiting for us to grow up and become that beautiful person they want us to be. We owe it to them. And finally, we owe it to them for their many, many sacrifices for us. Sacrifice is the ultimate demonstration of love. Jesus said in John 15, verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Our mothers lay down their lives for us every day. Is there anyone besides Jesus who has sacrificed more for us? They put our wants and needs before their own all our lives, tirelessly serving and caring for us, as only a mother would. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. It's my prayer that each and every one of us will grow in our respect and appreciation for our mothers and that today and every day we will let our mothers know how much we love and honor them. May God bless all of our mothers.